Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV, man. Back at you on the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on all the videos, man. Uh, everybody who has been subscribing lately, thank you. I appreciate it. I uh, love doing these Ravens videos, so we're just going to keep pushing and uh, more Ravens content coming. And uh, we got Ravens training camp day seven, and let's talk about what happened today. All right, so uh, injuries, right? Uh, we're going to talk about what veteran days. Um, Odell Beckham was out today. Um, he was not injured. He's just, John Harbaugh decided to give him the day off, which is great. Let him rest. We only Odell Beckham doing anything too crazy and getting hurt in practice. We don't need that. So he gets a veteran day of rest day. Great. Uh, Michael Pierce was originally on his list, but apparently he came out later in the day in practice. So I'm not sure why he wasn't out there to begin with, but he's fine as well. Uh, David Ojabo and, D and uh, Geno Stone, two guys who have been injured the last couple of days in practice. They did not practice today. Uh, Harbaugh says those injuries are still not serious. They're just taking their time with it, being cautious. So we'll leave it at that with um, as far as they as far as they go. All right, um, pup list, same guys. Uh, Ricard, there's been no update. Bateman, there's really been no update. Uh, other than that, he's still having some soreness, so hopefully he'll be back soon. J.K. Dobbins, um, Harbaugh said he's been in communications with J.K. Dobbins. Doesn't know when he's going to come back. And that's as simple as that right now, as, as it is for J.K. Dobbins, all right? Uh, Ty's Bowser, um, there is no timetable for his return for Ty's Bowser right now. So, that could be a bad thing. That could be, you know, he could be out there soon. I don't, I don't know. As you said, there's no time to for his return. You know, I'm really not even sure what happened to Tyus Bowser. Um, so there that is. Now, as far as injuries in practice today, Rocky seen. He left practice early with a uh, with a leg injury. John Harbaugh said there's nothing to be worried about there. Hopefully that stays like that. Um, Caillou Blue Kelly and Trenton Simpson, the two rookies from this year's class, they both left practice early, uh, injured, but. Both of those guys, uh, Kelly and Trenton Simpson, watch practice on the sideline. So I'm guessing that they're okay. They just didn't want to put them out there and practice, but they were they were good enough to watch. All right. So nothing really too serious. We'll see what happens with Rocky Scene. Hopefully there's nothing crazy. And another good day of nobody that's been seriously injured. So hopefully that continues. All right. Offense. So offense, man. Um, I want to talk about it's kind of been a new New concepts are really being shown out here for the Ravens offense, right? The Ravens, and it's going to sound so dumb because every NFL team does this. But anyway, the Ravens are working on rub routes today. So when you're down in the goal line or short yardage, uh, you basically have, you know, your receivers creating screens for other guys, you know, without, you know, actually it being the screenplay and trying to do it well enough to where they don't get called for offensive pass interference, right? This is something that the Ravens have really never done, even before Greg Roman. It's just... Find creative ways to get guys open, um, even if that means rub routes and things like that. They just haven't done these things. So now, in the last couple of days, we've talked about the Ravens doing rub routes, and we talked about the Ravens doing back shoulder fades. Two things that I have been wanting, I'm sure any Ravens fans have been wanting to see from the offense for a very, very long time. Hopefully, this is not just practice, and we get to see these in actual live games, because that's something that will help you in the red zone. We've talked about this. Back shoulder fades are almost impossible for DBs to guard. It's very, very hard for them to guard. And a rub route is the same thing. If you know you're getting a lot of man down there in the red zone, down close by the goal line, run a pick route for your guy, get him open, and run it smooth enough to where the referee is not going to call your team for offensive pass interference. So these two things are very, very important. I'm hoping that, like I said, it's not just they're going to practice it a couple times and then we don't see it throughout the season. These are things that need to be a part of the Ravens offense, and that's going to help them score from in close. So I'm glad that they're working on it. Hopefully that work turns into gameplay. All right. Now, as far as the players themselves on the field and who, who stood out, things like that, uh, Lamar Jackson said to have his best day of practice, and that's good because that's coming off another report where they say he's had his best day of practice a couple days ago. So Lamar Jackson is building up. He's being he's getting sharper. Uh, a lot of his passes, they said that he was working a lot. He was working underneath quick game, which I'm fine with, right? You have to be able to get the ball up the field one way or the other, right? So with Lamar Jackson, the quick game has never really been a part of the Ravens offense too much. So the fact that he's already working it right now and getting comfortable with that, I'm great with that because I know he can throw the ball down the field. I know that. So with him work in down the field and, and intermediate. So that quick game, if the Ravens can get that down pat, that's only going to open up the offense even more. Because I've seen Lamar Jackson throw the ball down the field. I've seen him hit Lamar Andrews over the middle. So I've seen all of these kind of things. The quick game was the one area where it's like, we need to see more of that. And I don't think that was his fault. That was just how the previous offense was ran. 
All right. Um, so the only uh, mistake he had today, I won't even say a mistake, but he did throw an interception, but it appears the interception wasn't his fault. He threw a short pass to Nelson Aguilar. It went through his hands. It was picked off, right? So that's not even Lamar Jackson's fault. That was the only mistake of the day, all right? All right, but don't get down on Aguilar because he had a good day today, all right? He beat, uh, so the Ravens did some more one-on-ones and also had some 11 11 7 on 7 things like that. Anyway, he beat Ardarius Washington twice, once on a streak route. That was that one one for a touchdown. He beat Marlon on a TD on, on a streak route for a touchdown. Then I believe he scored again on Marlon Humphrey. But this time the ball saying like Marlon was in good coverage. The ball popped up in the air, and Aguilar was able to keep concentration and get both his feet down in bounds. All right. Now that's a great play by Aguilar. But the one thing it's happened two days now is Marlon. I love him. He's an elite cornerback, but his ball skills leave a lot to this to be desired. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I wish he was better at taking the ball away from the opposing team. I do. Um, Odell had a great catch against Marlon. I think it might have been yesterday or two days ago. Same kind of thing. Marlon's in tight coverage. Ball pops up in the air. He gets his hands on. He pops the ball up in the air. Odell comes down with the football, right? Now, obviously, you can look at it two ways. Like I said, it's a great play by the receiver, and the quarterback needs to make the play. Um, I'm glad that Odell made the play. I'm glad that Nelson Aguilar made the play. But Marlon needs to pick these kind of passes off. I swear that's the only thing that's getting in the way of him being nationally recognized as a top cornerback. It's the interceptions. He just doesn't get them. That's the only thing that's holding Marlon Humphrey back. He gets those, he'll be recognized as what he is, a top three to five corner in this game. That's really what he is. Anyway, Aguilar, good day. Um, another guy who had a good day who's popping up a lot recently, that is Tyreek Black. I talked about him yesterday. I talked about him t again today. He beat, uh, I think his name is Jeremy Lucian. He had a stutter step, so pretty much a double move. Got him for a touchdown. Then he went over top of he went over top of uh, Jalen Armour Davis deep downfield, high point of football. So I love to see when there's a big wide receiver who plays big. Um, he's 6'3", 215, 220 ish. So that's a big guy. So I hate when there is big wide receivers that play small. I, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. If you're going to have that height, that physicality, please use it to your advantage. So. I'm glad to hear that he can run past guys, but also if he needs the high point of football, he can do that as well. So Tyree Black continues to impress. That's somebody that I'm going to be watching out for uh, when it comes time for preseason. I think he's number 81, I think. And somebody can correct me on that. He's either number 81 or 18, one of the two. Somebody can correct me on that. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking out for him. Uh, James Prochet beat Brandon Stevens on a route today. Uh, apparently, I think they said Brian Stevens was pretty close. James Brochet did a good job of keeping concentration, uh, catching the ball down the field. So that's, you know, good for him as far as that. All right. Now, defense. You mentioned, you hear I didn't mention Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers was a little quiet today. But apparently, the first person to stop Zay Flowers was Kavon Seymour, man. Kavon Seymour got a pass breakup on Zay Flowers. and um, But they, they ran it twice. Uh, I think they split 1-1. One, one. Zay Flowers got the second rep on Kavon Seymour, but I think he beat him pretty easily the second time. Uh, but good for Kavon Seymour doing what pretty much nobody's been able to do so far, and that stopped Zay Flowers. So <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. I have no complaints about that. And uh, Zay got him right back, so it's all good for me. All right. Uh, Marlon, speaking of Marlon, he did have an interception day. So remember what I talked about that um, Nelson Aguilar deflected pass that he, well, the pass that Nelson Aguilar dropped, I should say. Uh, it deflected to Marlon Humphrey, who caught the pass, all right? So, um, I know I said I need Marlon needs to work on his ball skills. He still does. So, catching the deflected interceptions is a part of that. It's all part of the game. Um, I still wish he would. He could have had multiple interceptions today, right? Uh, but it didn't go down that way for him. So, you know, it is what it is. All right. Uh, new signer, Anthony, uh, that's what I'm saying, Anthony, sorry. Author, Marlette, uh, you know, former Pittsburgh Steeler. Another candidate working that slot position for the Ravens. Had an interception today going up against Tylen Wallace. Um, pretty, I guess this probably was the second or third team quarterback, maybe. And uh, so he picked off, going up against Tyler Wallace, made a good play on the football. And apparently he's, he's had a couple of solid days in a row. And, um, you know, we'll see what he can do. All right, simple as that. All right, uh, Kyle Hamilton, pass breakup on Mark Andrews. All right, now, this is not really a big deal for Mark Andrews, whatever. You know, you win some, you lose some. But for Kyle Hamilton, this is, I like this, all right, because... His frame, 6'4", 220, 225, whatever how big he is, um, you need to be able to card tight ends, right? And Mark Andrews doesn't get any better than that except for, you know, Travis Kelsey, right? So if Mar if uh, Kyle Hamilton can show a propensity to guard these kind of big tight ends, that's just another tool in the Ravens toolbox that Mike McDonald can pull out and use, right? 
Um, so I'm happy to see that. And then uh, Delshawn Phillips, two days in a row, another interception in the red zone going against, um, then they said Josh Johnson threw this one. Uh, he was targeting Shamar Bridges. And uh, Delshawn Phillips came up with another interception, man. So that's two days in a row for him, making an interception. He came here as a special teams guy. Um, I don't think he's going to get so far as the way he's going to actually play regular snaps on the defense. But who knows, man? He keeps improving, plays in the preseason games well. You never know what can happen from there, right? It's all about taking your opportunity. So um, that's pretty much your Ravens practice for today. Um, no serious injuries. We'll see what's happening with Rocky Seen, but seems like no serious injuries. Um, the offense, Aguilar had another really good day, had one drop, but, you know, a really good day besides that. Lamar Jackson is getting more and more comfortable in this system and is getting sharper by the day. Every day we're coming back and saying Lamar just had a good day, Lamar just had a good day, um, which is not surprising. It's just great to uh, actually say those words out loud, all right? And then, um, you know, on the defense, right, some guys making plays. Kevon Seymour stopping Zay Flowers and uh, Kyle Hamilton, the new sign of Arthur Merlette. So a lot of guys doing things that are going to get them noticed, right? So that's your Ravens report for today. If you stayed to this point in the video, man, consider hitting that subscribe button. Got Ravens time to coming at you uh, uh, pretty, on a pretty consistent basis, man. So uh, thank you guys for watching. It's Gabriel. It's another fan TV. I'm out.